Hey guys, RC here, back with another RC Reacts. Leeds United played the uh, Monday game this week, and they played Wolves. And as you can see, we fell at home 1-0 uh, to Wolves. Uh, Raul Jimenez with the goal in the 70th minute. You know, they say stats don't tell the story of a game all the time, but in this case, the stats do tell the story. We dominated this game. Leeds dominated this game. Uh, Leeds should have won this game. Uh, we had nine shots in the first half um, <laughs> and just could not find the net. Interesting stat that I heard pop up on the uh, commentary was since Wolves have come back to the Premier League, uh, la what was it, last season, I guess, 26 of their I'm going to misquote this, but I want to, you know, how they've had like 20 of their 26 wins. All their goals have come in the second half. So they've definitely been a second half team. And the way they played today, they played very defensively. They really absorbed a lot of body blows. And then, uh, you know, they made one count uh, when they needed to, sort of. So the goal, Jimenez took the ball on the right wing, cut across the edge of the box. And he was going right to left. And the defender was with him coming across the center. And Leeds, of course, plays a man defense. So his defender was coming with him. And he stopped, reversed course, and got a shot off. And I really think it would have been an easy save for Melier, the Leeds keeper. It was right to him, right towards him. And Calvin Phillips... You know, our, our England international, a great player, uh, arguably the best player on the club. Uh, he was between the the shooter Jimenez and the keeper Melier. And being a defensive-minded player, he got his head on the ball and was trying to head it aside and deflected it. Melier was going right to left. And the ball went back across him to the back back post. He had no shot. He was caught flat-footed. And uh, it was a cheap goal. But, uh, hey, you know, he did a good job. I got to give him an S credit. He did a good job bringing it across the edge of the box, getting a shot off. Um, if Phillips hadn't touched the ball, I think this game was nil-nil. Uh, but, look, possession 68-32. to 32. 83% to 67 pass accuracy. Uh, almost 300 more passes in the game. Uh, 8 to 3 on corners. I mean, we just, you know, of course, you guys know I do football manager videos on this channel, which if you're tuning into this for the Leeds United recap, thank you very much. Check out some of my other content. I'd appreciate it. But... In Football Manager, we have a phrase, YouTubers have a phrase, and it says, getting FM'd. This is a game where Leeds United got FM'd. <laughs> now, I did see there was uh, some calls uh, about a possible red card. I really didn't see anything egregious. The only There was a play towards the end of the game where... Uh, uh, with about two minutes left at about the 88-minute mark, uh, one of the uh, Wolves players went down. And as he went down, the Leeds player kind of jumped over him, and the player thrust his foot up towards the Leeds, Leeds defender's groin. Uh, in fact, uh, he was going for Cox Cock, uh, if you want to put it that way, because it was Robin Cock, our German international center back, and, uh, yeah, he thrust it up right right towards his groin. Um, I don't – I mean, he would have hit him if he wanted to. I, I think he just kind of made the made the show. Uh, in fact, one of the announcers made a comment that there was uh, a similar play and that the kick was much higher and on target in another game uh, previous year, I believe. But um, – then, you know, he stayed down like he had been, you know, gut shot. And I will say this, there are a lot of, and it's a good thing I don't get monetized right now, Wolves have a lot of pussies on their team.
Um, and I'll say that lightly. One of the things that I hate most about football, uh, and I love football, but one of the things I hate the most is players that dive. I think it's atrocious. I think it's unprofessional. And, you know, of course, the famous Neymar uh, barrel rolling uh, meme that, you know, made its way around uh, after – uh, his his thing last year on the na- in the national game with Brazil, uh, there were three or four occasions where players, you know, you do this and it looks like they they got punched in the face by Mike Tyson. Uh, you know, they go down face first, they stay down for minutes. Uh, pathetic, uh, and and I think that needs to be, I think that needs to be put out of the game and. You know they need to they need to throw players out of the game for doing that. You do it once or twice. You throw somebody like a Neymar or a Ronaldo or or somebody like that out of a game one time. Probably is never going to happen again. Probably will never happen again. So this is not something I think would take a long time. But I think the diving is pathetic, and it's one thing that I detest. Um, it's one reason I don't like the NBA at all because of the flops, just flopping. I uh, hate it. But uh, anyway, all in all, what I take from this game, yes, it was a loss, um, second loss of the, of the season. You know, we're not gonna, we weren't gonna go undefeated in our first year in the Premier League. The Invincibles is a term that's used uh, with reverent tones because. Nobody goes undefeated, right? Nobody. Uh, it just doesn't happen. So I did not come in expecting to go unbeaten. I knew <laughs> you just didn't know any better. Uh, <laughs> I knew uh, I knew we were going to lose our fair share of games. I said at the start of the season, I don't care where we finish as long as it's 17th or better, which means we're going to stay up for another year. You know, you Stay up this year, and then you start to build. Wolves have shown that. Sheffield United have tried to show that. Um, you got to come up and stay up that first year, and then you build on that. You don't become a Liverpool or a Man City overnight. It's going to take years and years of staying up in the Premier League and building with a few players every year, and then we'll get there. But it's not going to happen this year. So that's what I, you know, what I take from this is, yes, it was a loss, but again, with a team that is established in the Premier League, Wolves finished top half of the table last year. We belong here. We can play here, and that's with the guys that we have. Uh, So let's just kind of take a look down in the standings. Everton uh, with the draw yesterday, uh, they are still atop the table, 13 points. Aston Villa... They, they still have a game in hand, and they're on 12, unbeaten. Uh, they will lose a game this year, hopefully upcoming to Leeds uh, here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Liverpool dropped a game uh, and a draw, so they've dropped points. Leicester, I mean, Man City's down in 11th. So, you know, even, even here, you know, we're on seven points after five. We're in 10th place. We're in the top half of the table. I have no problem with that. We do have a few teams, uh, Man City, Scum, they're they're still a game in hand. But, uh, you know, you look at teams like Burnley, Sheffield United, and Fulham sitting on one point, uh, all with draws this weekend. I don't think we're going to be down in that area. I don't think we have to worry about it. It would be nice for Brighton to get relegated after uh, not selling uh, Ben White to us. And then we could buy Ben White next year after they go down to the championship. That would be great. We saw the debut for Rafinha, uh, the, the uh, 23-year-old Brazilian that Leeds signed. Uh, he was their last signing of the transfer window. Uh, he didn't appear, you know, he didn't appear on the sheet, but he was involved in three or four plays that I saw. He looks dangerous. He looks like he has very good ball control, and uh, he has looks like he has some pace. What I'm going to be interested to see, Harrison and Costa are our two starting wingers. Rafinha came in for Harrison with about 10 minutes left in the game. And 
Paveda came, uh, Paveda's young. He's what, 19 or 20? Uh, he came on and he's a, he's a Man City product. Uh, but he came on at about 60, 65 minutes per Costa. Both of these guys just bring more blistering pace. At fresh legs, and so I think that will be a substitute pattern that we probably see a lot the rest of this season. I don't see Harrison getting replaced. I could see Costa maybe getting moved to the bench. That would, but you know, but he's been in pretty good form himself, so that's hard to call. So you know, where do you put a twenty million dollar player like Rafinha? You know who's who's considered a a you know class Brazilian player with a lot of flair that you would love to have on the feet on the pitch full time. Um, maybe putting him in as an as a number ten. Uh, there are some some thoughts that I've been hearing that you know he can play kind of more inside, but he's more of a natural winger. So that's you know going to have to wait and see. Uh, we also have some injury issues. Uh, Pascal Stroik came off. Looks like he may have strained a knee or something uh, on uh, on the goal, actually. Uh, he's the one, I think, that was coming across and, and got juked a little bit, and I think he may have tweaked a knee. Uh, our captain, Liam Cooper, and um, our other international reserve, uh, Urente, uh, who has yet to make his debut, both of them got hurt last week on international duty um, Urente with Germany and no, Urente's with Spain. Sorry, he was playing with Rodrigo. Uh, Urente from Spain and Cooper from Scotland. So, uh, hopefully, Cooper looks like he was warming up today and, and just didn't feel right in the warm ups. Uh, so they called for Stroik to come in for him, uh, last minute, right before the match. And, uh, so with him coming off, Urente's, I heard today, uh, catching up on some podcasts from the end of last week. But Phil Hay mentioned that it looks like Urente is going to be out at least three weeks, uh, more another two, two and a half weeks now before he uh, can return to training. So, And then it'll probably take him another week or two to get up to speed to get back into the rotation. So hopefully Cooper's back relatively quickly. But... Again, I mean, I, I try to put a positive spin on it. We played well. We actually outplayed Wolves, in my opinion. And we probably deserved a goal at some point. But we only had two shots on target. Good defense by them. I did see a little bit more of them. Uh, you know, they they, they counterattacked well. But I, I did see a little bit of championship style where they packed the box. And that's where we really struggled last year in the championship was teams that packed the box on us and put eight, nine guys in the box. Uh, made it hard to get shots through the crowd of people, and that's reflected with 13 shots, only two on target. So, uh, you know, the teams that come out, open up, and attack us, I think we can hold our own. And uh, I think we probably should have pulled a point at worst out of this one. But, you know, we drop all three. We move on to the next one. It is what it is. Uh, don't know who we play next. Taking a look at the calendar, the next oh next matchup is Aston Villa. And that will be on Friday, so a short week. And that will be Villa's makeup game with their game in hand, I suppose. Uh, and then we go on a short week. So that's going to be pretty tough. They've been playing really well. Uh, they look good. And as honestly, when I was looking at the schedule earlier in the season, this was the game I thought we could win in this stretch. We're going to have to play really well because they look good. And as much as I really dislike Jack Grealish, mostly for the reasons I mentioned earlier about diving, uh, yeah, I, I think he is a uh, diving fanatic, and I dislike him very much for that. But I watched them play yesterday, and he's got he's got skills, man. He has got skills, and he is a player that, while I may hate him, I can respect the skill. Uh, just wish he played the right way my opinion. All right, guys. Well, that's my thoughts for this week. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. 
Uh, again, I will try to do a review. That's my goal uh, after every Leeds match this season. And I uh, appreciate the interest, the views, the feedback. And uh, again, let me know what you guys thought about the match. And uh, go ahead and give me your uh, preview prediction for Aston Villa next week. I'm going to say 2-1 to Villa. Uh, again, I try to, I you know, I know a lot of the podcasts, they just go, we can't, you know, we're doing a podcast for Leeds, for Leeds fans. We can't pick against them. You know, you got to do this with your head, not with your heart. And, uh, you know, I want to be honest in my, my evaluation and what I think. And if we get outplayed and we look like shit, I'm going to tell you we look like shit. So uh, that's just how it goes. Uh, but we didn't look like shit this week. We just looked like shit in the finishing. So a little bit of back to normal for uh, Leeds as a whole of what we experienced uh, most of the last two seasons where we need to score more. All right, guys. Talk to you next week. Have a good one. Bye.